Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question sum of square numbers. All right, so in this question, we're going to be given a non-negative integer c and our goal is to decide whether there are two integers a and b such that a squared plus b squared is equal to c. Okay, so a quick example is when c is equal to 5. So in this case, a could be 1 and b could be 2. And when you square them, you have 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 1 plus 4, which is equal to 5. And in that case, a squared plus b squared does equal to c, so we return true. But now with the number 3, for example, there's no combination of numbers, which is going to give us uh, the value 3. So for example, let's take 1 and 1, then we would get uh, 2, right? Which is too small. Now let's take uh, 2. 2 would give us 4. And what uh, any other number we add is going to be greater than or equal to 4, uh, so it doesn't really matter. So let's see how exactly we can solve this question. And before I actually, uh, okay. so let me just show you how we can actually get or reach to a better method uh, step by step. Okay, so let's start off with an example of c is equal to 5. So we're taking c is equal to 5. And what we're going to do in the beginning is let's just use our most naive solution. Now, when we're looking at this, um, our goal is to find a a and a b. And if they exist when squared, then, uh, and when you add them up, it's equal to C. Then in that case, we return true, else we return false, okay? Now, in this case, our goal is to look for A and B. Now, how exactly are we going to look for A and B? In other words, what is the search space going to be? So realistically, it tells us that A and B are integers. So we could have everything from negative infinity up to positive infinity. This could be our search space. But one thing we can just directly get rid of is all the negative numbers because remember we're squaring these values so anytime we square a negative number it's going to end up becoming positive so for example negative 10 squared is the same as 10 squared they're both going to be equal to 100 since the negative is uh, we get rid of the negative so we don't need to worry about any negative values so the range is now going to be zero to infinity but now we can actually make it a lot easier so in this case so let's say uh, to infinity, right? So let's say we go up to 100. I'm just going to take a number saying 100. But in this case, c is 5. There's no reason to go to a value greater than 5. Because look, if we take the value 5 itself, 5 squared is 25. That's too big. So in this case, we can just stop our search space up to the value c itself. So our uh, space could be 0 to c. So let's see what that looks like for this over here. We can obviously simplify this further more, but let me just show you what this looks like. So let's say we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now what we could do is we could have uh, two for loops, and these two for loops are going to iterate through all of the possible pairs. So we're going to get all of the possible pairings that we have, whatever they are, and each time we're going to check after squaring them and adding them, is it equal to C? And if at any point it is equal to C, we return true. So this over here is going to be big O of n squared, and this is going to be our brute force solution. But the problem with this is the values of c, as it shows us over here, uh, it could be all the way up to 2 to the power of 31, and that's almost 2 billion values. So obviously this is not a good approach, okay? So let's see, how can we make search space even smaller? Okay, so in this case, uh, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the other thing to actually notice is, what is the largest value we can get, okay? And actually, uh, let me just take a simpler example just to kind of show you this. So let's say uh, c is equal to 25. Now, the first thing that comes to your mind is, well, 5 squared is equal to 25. Now, one way of looking at this is uh, one of the numbers could be 5. So let's say a is equal to 5. Then in that case, b is just going to be 0. So what I'm going to show here is there is never going to be a number greater than 5 which will help us satisfy this condition of a squared plus b squared is equal to c, right? And the reasoning is pretty simple because if 5 squared is equal to 25, 6 squared, 7 squared, or whatever, anything past that is always going to be greater than 25 no matter what, okay? So this is one way we can further shorten our search space. So instead of going from 0 to c, we can only, we can just go from 0 to square root of c, okay? And in this case, that's going to be, uh, so let's say c is equal to 25. Our range is going to be 0 all the way up to square root of 25, which is, well, nothing else but the number 5. So 0 to 5. So this actually decreases our search space by a lot. So in this case, let me just write it. So instead of 0 to c, 
we're only going to go, our search space is going to be 0 to square root of c, because anything past square root of c is automatically too big. So in this case, what is the square root of 5? Well, it's going to be 2 point something, and we're going to round it down. So we're just going to look at 0, 1, and 2. So this over here is going to be our new search space. Okay, cool. Now, in this case, these values are also, so now again, we can run two for loops, look at all the combinations. Obviously, we do have fewer pairings. But still, it, uh, since we have, since c can be all the way up to 2 to the power of 31, we want to further simplify it. And that, and the way we're going to do that is instead of having two for loops and looking at every possible pair, what we're going to do is a simple two pointer approach. We're going to have a low pointer over here, uh, and a high pointer, or let's just call it right, at the very ending. And the basic idea is that each time we're going to calculate the value. So currently we have 0 squared plus 2 squared, which is well equal to 0 plus 4, which is 4, right? Now, 4 is too small. So whenever the value is too small, the goal is to look for larger values. And the way we do that is by moving the left pointer to the right by 1, because, well, obviously the values on the right are greater. And if the values are too big, we move the right pointer to the left by 1. That's it. And we keep doing this until we find a solution. And if we find a solution, we return true. And if we don't find a solution, and at, uh, at any point the right pointer is uh, less than or equal to the left pointer, then we break out of it and we return false. So now at this point, uh, the left pointer was here. We move it to the right by 1, so it becomes over here. And now we have 1 squared plus 2 squared. And as you can tell, that's 1 plus 4, which is equal to 5. So perfect. We reach the value C, and in this case, we return true. Okay, so this is going to be our search space. 0 to square root of c, and then on top of that, we're going to use a simple two-pointer method. So now let's just see what this looks like in code. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is defining our two pointers. So L and R. Now L is going to start off at the 0 index, and R is going to be at the very ending. Sorry, not 0 at index, 0, the, the number 0. Okay, and R is going to be the uh, ending, the last value in our range. And to get that, like I showed you, it's going to be the square root of c. So we're going to use math.square root c. And let's just import math up top over here. So import math. Cool. So now we have L and R defined. And now what we need to do is we go in a while loop. Now in this while loop, our condition is going to be, we're going to stay in it as long as L is less than or equal to R. Now at this point, we need to calculate our A squared values and B squared values. So let's just call this A2 for A squared. And this is going to be L squared. So we could just do L squared or we could just do L times L. Same thing, right? And now we need our B squared value and this is just going to be R times R. Okay, so now we have A squared and B squared. So now what we need to actually check for is we've got to check if A squared plus B squared is equal to C. And we're going to have a condition for that. So if A squared, so A2 plus B2 is equal to C, then in that case, that means what well, we found our answer and we don't need to actually do anything. We can just directly return true. And if this is not the case, the other condition we have is if this value over here is too small. So let's just see how, so the way we do that is if A2 plus B2, right? And if this value is, too, uh, is smaller than C, then in that case, we want larger values. And the way we get larger values is by moving L to the right by one. So by incrementing it by one. And we do that by just doing L plus equals to one. Now, if this is not the case, we could just do else, but just to be more specific, I'll have an else if condition. And this is going to be when a2 plus b2 is greater than c. So now the sum is way too big, and we actually want smaller values. And we get this by decreasing or uh, decrementing the right value by 1. So r minus equal to 1. And that should be it. So if at any point we exit out of this while loop, that means that, well, we weren't able to reach the number c, and that means that we cannot find its value with a squared plus b squared, so we are going to return false. So let's submit this. So there's one small thing I actually forgot to mention. So when we take the square root of c, we want to round it down. And I didn't do that, so let's first do that. And we're just going to do int math of square root c. So for example, the square root of 5 is going to be 2 point something, right? But we're not going to consider that. We're only going to go up to 2. So when we convert it to an int, even if it's something like 5.9, it's going to end up just becoming the number 5. Okay, so we convert this to an int, and now it should work. So submit it. So as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.